It's Song Talk Radio with Michael, Neil, Phil, and the gang. Welcome to Song Talk Radio. This is episode 316. This is the show with songwriters talking to other songwriters about the craft of songwriting. We share tips, tools, and techniques, and together we all become writing songs, and we're all online. You I am your writing host. Songs? And, and writing, writing songs will be online. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host, Neil Modi, and with me are the quote-unquote spring has finally sprung members of the Song Talk Radio action team. We have uh, Flowers Phil. Ready and standing by. So you got flowers on your shirt there, Phil. Well, they're trees, actually. Well, they're trees. Yes. Um, they're still just, plants. Trees yeah. can have flowers. Still flora. And, uh, and we have Melted Away Mike. Uh... I wish I was. It's been a little chilly. Nice day on Saturday, though. And coming up, not, not that this is the weather channel, but this weekend, it's supposed to be fantastic. It's like, supposed to be like bombing. 20, 26 summer. degrees and summery and sunny. It'll yeah. be nice. Weather. Although I think this weekend, I'm just going to stick around the house. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. me too. And yeah. for the next weekend and the weekend and, after and that. And after that and the weekend after that. <laughs> just do laps yeah. around the house. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and uh, for all our listeners out there, please send your comments and questions to at Song Talk Radio on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Feedback at songtalk.ca for the good old-fashioned email, and uh, we'll share your thoughts on the show. Um, Can in I future. just interrupt? Yes. We also want, uh, I'm sure a lot of people are writing songs now that they're hunkered down, so share your songs that you're writing, whether they're about yes. COVID, pandemic, isolation, or if they are got nothing to do with that. Songs about squirrels, songs about food, whatever. <laughs> send us your songs, please, because yeah, I know you're your probably songs. working on them, and we really want to hear them. Yeah, yeah, we want to hear them, and and if and and when we get them, we're certainly consider doing a show where we showcase a bunch of our listener songs and talk about them. Yeah, because coming up, we're gonna. I think we've all been working on some new music, so in a couple of shows from now, we'll be letting you all know what we've been working on. So please let us know what you've been working on. Go to our site, and it'll let you know where you can. Uh, link to your songs or enter in. Indeed. And uh, and please visit us at songtalk.ca. Find out how you can be a guest. Uh, tonight, it's all in the family. There's no guest. Uh, and uh, tonight, we're going to be exploring songs that never change their chord progression. We're going to dive deep on three songs to reveal what makes them work. And, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what never changing your chord progression means for yes. <laughs> you as a songwriter. What does that mean? What does it all mean? Um, but first, uh, we'd like to alert our listeners uh, to the news that emerged this past week about funding opportunities for online music and other performances um, during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. So SoCan announced a program called Encore, with an exclamation mark, um, and, uh, you know, recognizing that a lot of musicians and a lot of people we know, you know, uh, are, are have really... <laughs> Um, had a loss of revenue because they can't do shows um, at uh, traditional venues, and um, and so the the encore program is aimed at uh, at at basically paying musicians for their online shows. And there's a couple of sort of um, uh, conditions. Uh, at least ten songs or comp or compositions must be performed live. Uh, or a live performance of at least 30 minutes must take place on Facebook or Instagram um, from now until March 7, March 7th next year, 2021. Uh, at least 100 people must have accessed the online event, and you have to uh, send your set list of all music performed uh, to SoCan's notification of live music performance form. They have a form on SoCan.com. Um, and the claims have to be made within 90 days. So even the start date was March 15th. So even if you did a show, you know, uh, an online show a couple of weeks ago, you can still submit um, your stuff. Each concert will be eligible for $150 payment with royalties going to all the rights holders of the music uh, performed as, as usual. Um, That's pretty good. And, uh, and yeah, so Ken is adding more platforms to the program. So in addition to Facebook and Instagram, hopefully um, there's going to be some more stuff. Um, and as well, the National Arts Council um, announced uh, hashtag Canada Performs. Um, Jim Cuddy is going to be the first uh, artist lined up. Um, and uh, and National Arts Council as well um, 
Uh, you can apply by email um, at the National Accounts Council website, um, Canada Performs at nac-cna.ca. Uh, performers are asked to send their names, a description of a 40 to 60 minute live stream performance that they will give, their chosen date between Thursday, Thursday and March 31st. Uh, 2020 and what streaming platform they will use. Performers will receive a thousand dollar grant. So this is this is big stuff. Um, and yeah. they, they, and these are pre-planned. So I guess you apply and then the program will will uh, give you a slot um, um, as they go through them. So stay tuned yeah, for that. Hash, hashtag yeah, just follow hashtag Canada Performs and get to see Jim Cuddy, um, Serena Riders up on the list. Um, you know, should be an interesting uh, thing. It'll be, uh, it's interesting, you know, at least 100 people must have accessed your online event for the SOCAN yeah. program. I wonder how they determine that or if it's just on an honor system or? I don't know. They could probably, there might be some metric that shows that or maybe if they get, you know, a third, maybe they get 30 likes, then they assume yeah. 100 people or something. I don't know. Yeah, that could, that could. Uh... It's an interesting question. How do they verify that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it might just be um, on an honor street, um, an, an honor system at this point. A lot oh, of things are. Yeah, uh, it's interesting. I think a lot of people think that SoCan, including me, for the longest time, that SoCan was actually a government-funded um, organization, but it's mm. not. It's actually no, it's not. it's its own business. So people are saying, business. "Oh, this is just uh, our tax dollars at work," and mm. no, it's not. So. Um, yeah. It's great that they're actually helping people do stuff online. And, uh, mm -hmm. of course, even if um, if you are performing live after this, don't forget you can actually submit your songs to SoCan and get paid. Yes. So, as we all found out in our um, show. Um, with, uh, with, the, with the, was Eric? Eric Albert? Yes. Um, yeah. The Canadian um, Music Incubator. Yeah, yeah. CMI. Oh, yeah, that yeah. wasn't Derek. That was uh, oh. someone else. Yes. And, Val, uh, Val, Vlad, Vlad, Val. Vlad. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you are a songwriter, you really should be registering at SoCan.ca. There is no cost uh, yep. to you. And they have lots and lots of resources. So um, if you have spare time during these quarantine days, um, stop by SoCan.ca and sign up and register your songs. Yeah. And find out more about one of the many ways you can generate money with your music. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Great. Because that's what it's all about. That's right. That's what it's all We're about. not doing that's it for the love. Exactly. <laughs> it's all about the money. Shut up. <laughs> Okay. So we got an interesting so, show tonight. Yeah. yeah. So our, our topic tonight are songs that don't change their chord progression. Now, you know, like when we talk about songwriting, we're always talking about changes. So this is, we're, we're going to be talking about songs that this is one thing that doesn't change. Um, in the song, yeah. so I, I, I'm I'm curious what you guys think, having listened to the ones that we've picked and and just sort of explored this a little bit. What do you think? Wh why do you think a songwriter may choose to do that? It's you know it's interesting actually because I I made the choice that you know it's like the verse and the chorus are the same, but the bridge could be different. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because I think it's probably like I think it's a challenge to have a clear verse idea as well as a clear chorus idea on one um, chord progression. I think it'd be very hard to do that on a bridge as well. Not impossible, but uh, oh. very hard. Um, but it's it's an interesting approach, something I've never done. I've always assumed, oh, it's the bridge or the, it's the chorus. You need to go to the four or the five or, you oh. know, you need to, or, you know, you need to do some kind of tonal change. Um, and one of my songs, it's interesting because it actually is a full fledged chorus, even though the, um, the actual chords don't change at all. So yeah, it's an interesting technique, something worthwhile exploring. How about mm -hmm. you, Michael? Um, well, at first I, I didn't think you could do that. I didn't know that I, <laughs> like you just weren't putting in the opera or whatever. And I remember learning how to play one of the songs I, I would suggest tonight, uh, wicked game, the Chris Isaac song. And I remember being astonished that, wait, no, it's just the same chords over and over again. Mm -hmm. And it's a great song. And so that sort of was the first clue that I had that this sort of thing happened. And then so I was kind of kept an ear out for that sort of thing. Uh, and I, I think that uh, I, I think it's a good 
songwriting tool to either listen to these kind of songs or look for them because um, then they, then how do you keep a song interesting? I mean, that's something I think any song you write, you want it to be interesting for the listener. Mm -hmm. And so how do songs that keep the same chord pattern change? Uh, I would imagine that sometimes the songs themselves come from maybe a jam with a band, like uh, um, some Rolling Stone songs, that's all it is. It's like the same chord progression and they're just jamming and having solos. And, and I imagine, you know, there's blues songs that are like that. So it, it's not an unusual format, but in pop music in particular, there used to be the element of craft and, and structure that people stuck to. Mm. And uh, so when you break away from it, I'm, you know, sometimes I think it just comes from the band jamming, but then other times, uh, at least pre-2015, um, it was, you know, perhaps an exercise. What it taught me was you really need to pay attention to lyrics and vocal melodies, and it's kind of cool. You go, okay, I'm going to sing this in the verse. Now, what can I do different with the same uh, chord pattern to make a chorus out of it? So I just found it a really interesting songwriting exercise. Yeah. Uh, yeah, certainly the, the the sort of thing that occurred to me when we were when we were just investigating this is that number one melody really governs everything, right? Like if your chord progression is the same, you you want to introduce some element of contrast into the into the chorus, and melody plays a huge part in that. So typically in, in these in these songs, the melody jumps up, and and you go to you know if your if your um, verse was anchored around the the tonic of the of the chord progression. Um, then you 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 take that up a fifth or whatever and 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 center your melody around there for the chorus and that then that sort of gives it that that extra lift. But the the other thing that occurred to me too is that we're always talking about tension and and release in songs, and to do the same chord progression over and over again holds a certain amount of tension. Like you're gonna uh, typically when you change your your uh, harmonic structure in the chorus, you're 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 really um, giving the song a sense of release into the chorus. Like you really drop into the chorus. But when you got the same chord progression, then and the only thing that really changes is the melody from a musical point, um, or the rhythm, or, or and and probably the lyrics, obviously. But uh, the the melody changes, but the chords don't. Then that's that tends to um, hold the tension a little bit. Not as much as if the melody didn't, if the melody center didn't change, but it, it's sort of a medium ground between uh, no contrast and high contrast. It's sort of a medium uh, contrast thing. I was reading an article that kind of talked about that. It said, you know, one of the roots of rock and roll is African rhythms and drums, and that's part of it. You keep that repetition of rhythm, and mm -hmm. it's it's so either hypnotic or the the uh, it's you know it does build tension in you know even if the the uh, rhythm increases slightly or whatever, and to break away to a different chord or to a different you know something else releases the tension, and sometimes you don't want to do that, you know. Yeah. And so you just keep a, a rhythmic bed and, and a, the same chord pattern. And then over top of that, you add different instruments or uh, you change the melody, but you're still keeping that that surge and that, that the, the, the heartbeat, the drum the beat of it. Yeah, yeah. the groove. Oh, the there's, groove, that's it. The groove. There's, a, there's a few different um, approaches that I've noticed. One is, and I think it comes from a blues uh, tradition, and that is uh, repeating the stanza. So instead of having, um, and, uh, think of the car, shake it up. Um, again, it's one, it's one verse, it's, it's one chorus, uh, chord, series of chords all through the song, but their chorus is shake it up, shake it up. So they're just mm -hmm. doing the one, uh, the, you know, the, the one statement, um, in another way it's, you can take the verse melody and kind of embellish it a bit. And um, that's what um, um, in that song, somebody I used to know, that's sort of an embellishment of yes, their verse. Um, but there's another way of doing it where you actually make a full fledged chorus where it sounds like a completely di like if you didn't weren't paying attention, you would assume there are different um, chords. To yeah. it. So it's so it, as far as we tell, those are the three basic uh, approaches of of handling a verse and a chorus with uh, di with. The same chords, except a different melody. Mm -hmm. Okay, why don't we hear an example? Who wants to go first? Um, well, why don't I go first? Okay. Uh, so um, we'll talk about the, the uh, like, uh, I thought of a couple. 
that are pretty well known. We can talk about those, but the one that most recently really stuck with me, and <clears throat> uh, again, was something I go, I like this song, I learn how to play it, and as I'm learning how to play it, I go, wait a second, it's just the same chords over and over again, but complete, like, uh, one of the things, and I think it's common with one chord progression songs, is the verses are very uh, wordy or multi-rhythmic and have a lot going on, and then the choruses elongate and give, you know, are a little easier uh, on the words. ear, fewer words, right? Uh, and to uh, to Phil's point, uh, the chorus, uh, sorry, the chorus, the bridge does have, I think, uh, a different pattern, same chords, just the uh, the chords for this song are E minor, C, A minor. That repeats. But when we get to the bridge, it goes E minor, C, uh, A minor, C, E minor, C. So it just introduces the C more frequently and ends on a B. But other than that, it obeys the, uh, the <laughs> progression. So uh, this is uh, the Arctic Monkeys. Uh, and the song is Why'd You Only Call Me When You're High. So let's take a listen and you get a sense of how it breaks up. And we'll talk about it once we've heard it. The mirror's image It tells me it's home time But I'm not finished Cause you're not by my side And as I arrived I thought I saw you leaving Carrying your shoes Decided that once again I was just dreaming Of bumping into you Now it's three in the morning And I'm trying to change your mind Left you multiple missed calls And to my message you replied Why'd you only call me when you're high? Talking the same shit. I need a partner. Well, are you out tonight? It's harder and harder to get you to listen. More I get through the gears. Incapable of making all right decisions and having bad ideas. Now it's three in the morning and I'm trying to change your mind. Left you multiple missed calls until my message you replied. Sorry, I didn't know it was a concept video. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's very much so. Yeah. So, who, who, who's the songwriter for that, uh, Michael? Uh, so Alex Turner, who's the uh, the lead singer of the band, does most of the writing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not as common as the other two, as well-known, I think, as the other mm -hmm. two songs I chose, and which is why I thought we'd go with this one, because the other two, if I mention them, you know the song, and you, you already hear the lyrics. But um, this one, I thought... Uh, I mean, it it did stay kind of in this like the it didn't pick up pace and it didn't get overly uh, like the instrumentation on the chorus didn't change too much. So certainly the the hook line, "Why you only call me when you're high?" He almost treats it more like a verse refrain kind of thing. Like mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. line between verse and chorus gets a little blurry, and and certainly the bridge the bridge certainly does pop out. Um, I think. A large part of it is a production 
like it's a lot more rhythmic, yeah. a lot thicker instrument instrumentation, and everything. But like you said, the chords change there slightly, and and sometimes that's all you need is is you know you stay in the same key, you just move into a chord, you know, it's a slightly different order of the chords or something, and it and it feels that much different. Yeah, you can write good, remember memorable songs with very few chords, but oh, yes. yes, change the order around slightly and really play with the uh, the melody. Uh, and something that's important also is production. Production is another way to mm -hmm. bring interest into the same chord progression over and over again. Yeah, and, and, and again, but the, 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 the way to really tell if the song is working is to strip it down to one instrument and vocals and see if it still holds. Yeah, yeah that true, is true, too. <laughs> right? So you don't want to you don't want to lean on production too much. No, no, but it that I mean, it, it when, helps. When but you hear a song on the radio pieces. and you don't realize that it's just one chord progression, oftentimes it's because the production has hidden. Yeah, that. certainly that applies with my example. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. well, well uh, yeah, Phil, what do you think? And then we'll, we'll hear Neil's example. Yeah, it's you know, it's it's interesting because um, you know the first uh, the first I've seen of it is actually through a concept video which um, does kind of uh, change the approach a bit. And there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of folio stuff around it too. Um, was this the first time you'd heard the song? Yes, actually. Right. I mean, I've heard lots of Arctic Monkey stuff before. I just hadn't heard this particular one. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it's great. It's, it's certainly a great concept um, for, uh, for a song. Now on the, um, on the track, uh, the, well, Called the album track. I guess they're not really album tracks anymore, but I guess that's what we'll call it. Did they have that sort of that uh, modulated voice? No, no, it's like a two no, and a half minute song on the album. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just a pop song. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's um, <laughs> which is interesting because that I mean that's the only time I've seen it is with that wacky voice. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, the, the, the other thing about this song too is something you were saying earlier, Michael, about how the chorus typically is fewer words. Not so much in this. Not in this one. It, it, it's, it's just a, wordy it's the just whole a way conversation. Through. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a very much an Alex Turner thing. Like that's what he does. <laughs> yeah. As long as it can be quite wordy, but yeah. He's a chatty fellow. He is a chatty fellow. <laughs> so speaking of um, production, sort of hiding the fact that uh, this is one song, I'll do mine next. Uh, sure. To my sure. number one uh, choice. <clears throat> now I figured out that this was when. Um, one chord progression because I was playing around at home on a bass and, you know, I write a lot on the bass mm -hmm. and then I was playing these three notes and it's like, um, one flat third, seven, mm -hmm. uh, flat seven. Flat I was seven. Just going, and it's just going, what song is that? And I went, Oh yeah, <laughs> there is a picture. Yeah. 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 And then uh, I went to the chorus and I thought, I wonder what the chords for the chorus are. And they were the same chords. Yeah. Um, and this is done so well that I think that you don't actually realize it's one um, uh, it's one set of chorus. Uh, there's the bridge, of course, is different, but the uh, verse and the chorus are the same. But what I like about this is the chorus is a full fledged chorus. It's not just like uh, words repeated. It's not just a, a stanza, but it's like a full chorus with its own uh, melody developments and um, um, section in the production. So as you're listening to this song, listen for all the little bits of fills that they put around the vocals um, and how they set up the chorus, because this is really, really well done. Uh, this is uh, going to be the Thompson Twins um, and Hold Me Now. Two of a kind. Bo 
some perfect world we know we'll never find So perhaps I should leave here Yeah, go far away But you know that there's nowhere that I'd rather be than with you Yeah, so that was uh, written by Tom Bailey, uh, Lena Curie, and Joe Leeway, and produced by Tom Bailey and Alex uh, Sadkin. Nice. Um, released in November of 1983, um, but it's it's got all these tasty little bits all the way through it. It's really a uh, Interesting. When you listen to it over and over again, you can actually tell all the different elements that kind of maintain interest all through the song, mm -hmm. um, which is one way of doing. But also the chorus. I thought, you know, it's a very strong chorus that is very different from the verse, even though it's basically on the same chords. Not on the same chords, but the 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 verse is kind of a. It's almost like a speak kind of it's like really yeah. kind of low, and then the chorus it jumps up like a good fourth, and it's very sing songy. The chorus. Um, unlike the conversational style of the, of the verse, like there's there's a strong contrast. This song, I've, I've heard this song since I was a little kid, obviously, right? Yeah. But it, this never occurred to me as it's got to have the same chord progression because this, the chorus has got <laughs> such an enormous lift that, like you're saying, like you think that's there's got to be a chord change there for sure. Yeah, right? I, I just assumed, you know, there's not. <laughs> yeah, I just assumed, but it turns out there's not. It's amazing sometimes. Yeah, but it does never... keep. I was going to say, but it, that insistence, it keeps it. And one thing I noticed with this song is it's really easy to get back into the verse from the chorus when yeah. it's the same chord progression. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, like what we're saying about the tension and not only the tension release, mm-hmm. but the contrast, right? Like this is this is a song that has that medium contrast because the the the, the slight bit of tension does get held by that consistent rhythm and the consistent uh, groove and the chord progression. Mm-hmm. But the melody is what makes it take off. If they had opted for a different chord progression in the chorus or change key or something like that, it may have been too too much of a change. Like it would have been yeah. like a really a radical thing. Maybe mm-hmm. they wanted to keep it a little bit more, you know. Softer. And even the uh, bridge wasn't much of a bridge. It was just really a sustain of a, a note or two. It didn't change significantly. It just was like a rest. And then you went back into the progression again. Yeah. 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 Yeah, and it, it's a really cool progression because it's like it's like the one, the minor six, but then it's like the major seven, right? Which really, it, it, especially in the chorus um, with the, the "Stay with Me," like that's that 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 really comes strongly out as a hook. I think because of that, because of that mm-hmm. chord change, it's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a an interesting little tune, definitely. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, so I yeah. don't know if it's worth four minutes and 44 seconds. It really goes <laughs> on. <laughs> well, it, it, it's, it's like we were saying before, right? Because you're just vamping on that on that chord progression, you can just loop that at the end and do all the you know the vocal runs and this and that and the other. And yeah. they could have thrown a guitar solo on top of that if they wanted. Like whatever. Like you could have. Yeah, and and the, yeah, like, I think yeah, the third verse not. they dropped out. It was very empty. Uh, again, yes. dynamics is a great way to sustain yeah. Uh, yeah. interest in a song that's the same chord progressions. Mm. And and, 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 and the bridge, sorry, the, the bridge does break it up as well because it does go yeah. to a, a, a not a radically different chord progression, not, not changing. Actually, they are kind of they're borrowing a chord from another key, but it's still within the same family. Like it's it's kind of related, but it's like um, you know, it it is definitely a, a step in the contrast direction. But the the bridge is just oh oh oh's and then they come back. Like it's very quick and yeah. they come back. Mm-hmm. Did something right? It uh, lasted for twenty one weeks in the Billboard Hot one hundred. Yeah. In the US. Yes. And yeah, it was one of their biggest hits. And uh, yeah, an interesting uh, Wikipedia article on it as well, which you might want to take oh, a look. Yeah. yeah. But um, yes, that was kind of a fun thing. I was like, I liked the Thompson Twins as much as anyone did, but I didn't know that much about them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, was just, it was just one of those fun little discoveries I made while I was uh, practicing one day. So mm-hmm. yeah, that, 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 that's interesting how you can just stumble upon something like that. It's like, hey, what is that anyway? <laughs> I know that song. <laughs> yeah, that song. Right on. Okay. All right, Neil, what's yours? Okay, so my pick. Um, I, I went through the same kind of thing that that Michael went through. I, I I thought of a song first, and then when I actually looked it up, I realized that the bridge was in a different uh, chord progression. So I decided to dis- discard that one. That was "Beautiful Day" by U2, and I'm like, okay, that one doesn't count because the bridge goes to a different place. I know you did that for your song, Phil. But I, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to find something that was bona fide, the same chords all the way through. Um, and then and then another song that are, that did occur to me, and again, I wasn't sure until I you know. Uh, looked up the chords and I'm like, okay, is this is you know good you know guitar? Or what's that website? UltimateGuitar.com. They're not always right. <laughs> you know, you got to double check their work, right? So yeah. I play along with it. Play along with it to piano. I'm like, oh my god, this is the exactly same chord progression, but the pre-chorus takes off in a different melody. The chorus takes off a different melody. And my question to you guys is. Is production a, a crux here? Are the, are the, is, this, is is the songwriter leaning on production to make those contrast changes? Because I, I I think that if you pulled off this song with just vocal and a piano or vocal and a guitar, it would still work, and you still know verse from chorus from pre-chorus. And what's so the, the song? song is <laughs> song is drum roll, please. <laughs> it's uh, "Can't Feel My Face" uh, by The Weeknd, and uh, so let's take a listen and we'll talk about it. She'll be the death of me, at least we'll both be numb And she'll always get the best of me, the worst is yet to come But at least we'll both be beautiful and stay forever young This I know, this I know She told me don't worry about it She told me don't worry no more We both know we can't go without it she told me you'll never be in love oh, oh. I can feel my face when I'm with you But I love it But I love it oh, I can feel my face when I'm with you 
Sabrina And she'll always get the best of me The worst is yet to come All the misery was necessary When what deep in love Yes, I know Yes, I yeah. know Girl, I know She told me don't worry I Can't Feel My Face, uh, performed by The weekend songwriters Abel Tesfe, which is The weekend's real name, uh, Ali Payami, Max Martin, we all know him, uh, Peter Svensson, and Savan Kotecha. Oh, all right. Cool. That's the first person. time I'd seen that video. I didn't realize that uh, he, he caught fire. <laughs> yeah. I've heard the song tons. I've heard yeah, stripped yeah, down versions of it, too. I didn't see the video until, until just a couple weeks ago. Um, yeah. So kids, don't try that at home. Yeah. No, to, to your point, Neil, yeah. I, I think, yeah, I mean, production is great on this song, but I think it's, I think what you're reacting to more is the arrangement, the dynamics and the, yeah. the choices. I mean, very much production is kind of a part of the weekend's uh, sound. Mm -hmm. uh, like and a lot of like there's some other Toronto artists who like Noah Shabib who did a lot of work with uh, uh, Drake and that kind of sonic uh, world is a is a big thing. But I think that song, especially his vocals, like the the vocal melody is killer, uh, and then just the choice of arrangement where it drops down and where it picks up. I think that's what carries it. Mm, production certainly helps, but I think it's a really strong song despite that. It's mm -hmm. interesting because if you listen to the chorus, <clears throat> the first couple of times through, it's not that catchy, but it gets more catchy as the song goes through because he's adding counter melodies to mm. the chorus. It's a really neat. I remember the first time I hearing about hearing that, and at first I sort of thought, well, it's you know a little bit dull, but by the end, it's really strong. But that's because the chorus becomes much more complicated as the song progresses, which is a really neat approach as opposed to you know most people have a song have a chorus and it'll be sort of the same and sometimes the dynamics will pick up through the song but the actual chorus won't change that much where actually his chorus if you listen to the very first one in the song versus the last one they're 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 not different, but one is much more embellished, and it's all those mm -hmm. embed embellishments that really kind of grab you and want you to hear it over and again, over again. Mm. Yeah, that's actually really interesting, even from an exercise point of view. For if you're songwriting, is can you come up with a completely different melody with with the same chords? 
you know, so if you write a verse and then you write a chorus with the same chord progression, can you come up with a melody that's rhythmically different, melodically different, a different tonal center, not the tonal center, but a different range? You know what I mean? And and it's the sort of thing I think I think, Phil, you brought this up on the show way back when about how you two does this all the time where they repeat the chorus at the end. So it's the same chords, but Bono sings a, a whole new lyric and a whole new melody. Yes. Yeah. Right. So that, that's an interesting exercise just from a songwriting point of view to see if you can, how, how well can you pull that off? Because typically, I mean, I, I mean, I, I know for myself, I'm, my, I go, I rely on my piano a lot and I tend to play with a lot of chords. The songs I've shared on this show, you know, I'm going like seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen chords throughout the entire song. So I do rely on the chord progression to lead me into a different melodic space. But it'd be a good exercise for me to say, hey, let me try a song where the chord progression never changes and see what I can come up with melodically and it, see if I can yeah. pull it off. It, it would be a good discipline. When I got back into songwriting, that was kind of where I started. I go, okay, I'm just going to write in major chords and I'm just going to write with three or four chords. And, you know, mm -hmm. it, it, over time it expanded. But as a songwriting exercise, I often work in, oh, here's a good collection of so chords, like three or four chords, and work them. And then I'll work out a couple of different melodies uh, to see, okay, is this the verse or is this the chorus? Can I get something really punchy or is it more a verse kind of, you know, what do I do with it? And sometimes, you know, you keep both. But... Uh, I always like to, to try out a couple, of, especially if I, because sometimes I start with the vocal melody, but if I start with a good chord progression, I don't want to let it go to waste. So I'm like, okay, mm -hmm. what kind of verse would this be? What kind of chorus would this be? Is this a bridge? <laughs> like, you know, really try everything. And I think that's probably a good exercise for, for anyone to, you know, if you, you know, come up with a great chord progression, see what you can do with it, see how many different ways, and then... Sometimes you junk it, or sometimes you don't, or sometimes you do, yeah, like that U2 kind of thing where uh, this is my chorus, but I had that other good melody. I'll put that on the end just as yeah. I'm going out or something, you know? Don't want to waste a melody. <laughs> well, I think I think that I, I always had a feeling that came from sort of a jamming, you know, as the band was sort of vamping on the chorus, and, you know, the Bono went off and did his Bono y thing. Um, but it's, it's interesting because I just as. As a habit, I just, you know, I'll be doing a verse and then I'll think, okay, where's the chorus go? And then do new chords for the chorus. And I can't think of one song I have that I haven't done that. And I really should just find three or four chords and just do a verse and a chorus mm -hmm. on that, you know, as opposed to falling back on my uh, on my habits, which is so easy to do as yeah. a songwriter, you know? For me, maybe it's because I don't know that many chords, so i got to make <laughs> the most of them. Well, and, and, and the, interesting, the interesting thing, too, about the three songs that we picked, none of them are a 1-6-4-5 or a 1-4-5 campfire chord mm. progression. Two of these songs, it, it, I Can't Feel My Face, I think, and uh, Hold Me Now are, are in that Mixolydian thing because of, of the major seven. Get that flat seven in in the scale and, and the major seven in, in the in the chord progression that puts it into a different mode. I mean, certainly if you're going to pull this, if you're going to try and pull this off, I wouldn't recommend you go for like a one four five uh, kind of. It'd be hard to make that interesting for a long time. Yeah. I think. Well, of course, that's. I mean, a lot yeah. of blues. P that would be a blues song. Well, right? and then yeah, then then you're looking at a traditional blues or traditional country thing, and and that's kind of yeah. If that's yeah. your wheelhouse, then sure. Yeah. Right. Um, but I, I think um, uh, "Hold Me Now" is a flat seven. It's not a. It's not a. Um, it's not a major seven. The 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 in the scale, it's a flat seven, but it results in the major chord, like like the seven. You know what I mean? One, it's one flat three, um, and then the um, flat seven. Yeah, but the flat seven is a major. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I see. It's a major the, the, chord. The chord is a major. Okay, chord. I thought you were still talking about a major seventh, which is often, which is like just a half, a half tone down from the major. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 As no. when you have like a major seventh chord, it's uh, the seventh is actually sharpened, so it's one. It's one below the root. Yes. Yeah. Th you see, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. You see, this is why we can never get along because just things <laughs> go wrong. Because we're talking about so the same easy. thing, but we're still arguing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how do we go through our uh, runner-ups? Because there, there are obviously lots of there are lots of songs out there that that chord progression never changes. I was actually surprised. Yeah. Yeah. I'm way more than I thought. Yeah. Mac one um, that. Uh... Yeah. Well, I was 
talk, I was talking to my girlfriend about this show, and she said, "Oh, you're going to do the Fleetwood Mac song?" And I go, "What Fleetwood Mac song?" I go, it's "Dreams." And she mm. played the bass line, and go, "That's it. It's F G the whole song." F G. It's only two chords. Two, two chords. chords for the whole song. Wow. And I thought, "Oh my God, that poor bass player. How does he stay <laughs> awake?" <laughs> but I mean, it was a, it was one of their singles, right? It was, it was a hit. hit. Yeah, it was, it was a hit. hit. Yeah, and hey. it's incredibly simple, uh, but. You know, it's uh, a great groove mm -hmm. and, you know, some wonderful vocals. And again, the embellishments or the harmonies and, and the instrumentation and the texture and the production, I guess, like this. So there's a lot of different ways. And I don't think it's cheating or a crutch. I think those are all elements of a produced song. It's not necessarily songwriting per se, but I think it's like, songwriting as a group, definitely. As a groove, but you you can't deny the chorus of that song stands out as a chorus. Like like Phil was saying before, it's a fully developed mm -hmm. real chorus. Yes. You know, there's there's no there's no mistaking that part yeah. of the song. Or yeah. you're not going to listen to that and go, oh, was that another verse? No, that is the chorus. It's clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and you don't feel ripped off. It feels like a no. full song. That's it's what I mean. about something. It's got good lyrics. It resolves. It has yeah. dynamics. No, it's yeah. really good. Uh, so yeah, so Fleetwood Mac dreams. Uh, uh, for you younger people, check that out. And yeah. for you older folks, you, it's Remember burned into your it's burned into your into your memory because it was From playing. From 1977. It was, it was, well, a that, was on, that was on the rumors. That was on rumors album. So if you're gonna if you're yeah. if you're starting with Fleetwood Mac, that's probably a good place to start as a rumors album. Yeah, pretty yeah. well. Every song in that was a hit or was yeah. released as a single. It's crazy. Ridiculous. Um, yeah. You got any more backups there? or any more runner-ups uh, there, Phil? Well, the other. Uh, Sorry, me. Yeah, do I have yeah, another? Yeah, you, any more songs? No, the, the other one I had was uh, the one I mentioned earlier was was Wicked Game, the oh, yeah. Isaac song, which is beautiful. Oh, uh, song. And it doesn't have a lot in the way of dynamics. The chorus is diff uh, definitely clearer than the verse, mm -hmm. but I think what really pulls that together is it's got this wonderful guitar line in it, and I yes. think that's something. Uh, you know, that applies to blues and jazz as well, where you can play a chord progression over and over again uh, if you've got excellent musicians playing wonderful solos over it, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. that that will keep you in a song also for a long way. Yeah, uh, you, yeah that, that's just introducing another melody. It's being played on an instrument, yeah, but it's basically. certainly... Yeah. It's, it, it, and again, this is what we are talking about before. Like, how do you pull it off and you introduce a whole new, different, unique melody over the same progression? That's exactly what that song does. Yeah, and then what happens in Wicked Game is, you know, you have the, the guitar, then you have the voice, then you have a guitar, then you have the chorus voice, and that goes back and forth. And I think at the end of the song, it resolves where both the guitar and the voice are happening together and they do work together. So, you know, it's and also, you get kind of a third, yeah. And it's also like an incredibly strong emotional lyric. I mean, as it's as a lyric, it's very, very focused as to what it's talking about. And it's very, like, it's a beautiful, amazing lyric. Yeah, um, and, and it sounds like what it's about, right? It yes. sounds mournful, and it is about a, a mournful feeling uh, of love. So, uh, and it was a huge hit around the world. Oh, I yeah. remember mm -hmm. reading uh, an article about the Iraqi war. might have even been the first one. And uh, this guy was, the journalist was driving around Iraq uh, in a cab. And he said that's all he heard on the radio. And he said the Iraqis loved it, too. Like, <laughs> so, you know, it, it translates across all kinds of boundaries. A good song. It also has a structure that is, um, it's interesting. It's something I've noticed in modern songs that they don't seem to do. Um, it's kind of more, uh, happened more in the, you know, in the, in the 60s, 70s, and, and guest 80s, where you would have a verse, but then you'd have a guitar lick. Of some yeah. sort that she would be able to sing, you know, like do 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 do, or like an Aerosmith song, or you know, there'd be like a guitar hook, um, yeah, a riff, which a riff, yeah. which doesn't seem to happen that much now because I think a lot of stuff is done in the box with plugins and it tends to not be as riffy as whereas I think when you're in a band you w will tend to do a bit more uh, kind of riffy things but well, the, the, uh, the, the music thing, is more beats thing, oriented too well more yeah. beats oriented but the what the kids are doing these days is doing those nonverbal <laughs> hooks right that's essentially yeah. kind well, of the same vocal thing. It's being, hooks it's not being playing yeah. on a guitar but they're ooh ooing all over the place yeah that's kind of the equivalent yeah, it's not as cool as a guitar lick I don't think <laughs> that's true <laughs> well, no, yeah, they're not making music with guitars much anymore. No, no, no. Um, but of course, um, <laughs> welcome to get off my lawn. 
<laughs> Actually, no. I think now, if you're if you're really young, you should yeah. start playing guitar because it's going to be out of fashion, and then it's going to be yeah. really back into fashion, and you want to be right on the crest there. You know. Right. My runner-ups were um, uh, Talk Talk. Uh, Life's what you make it. Ooh. Which is interesting. It's actually one. Um, it's actually just one bass figure all the way through. Doom, 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 and 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 uh, you know, sort of the same chords all the way through. But it's it's an, again a really fascinating um, listen if you pay attention to the um, to the pedaling of the. Uh, of the bass line and how they put lots of different things on it to make choruses and verses and bridges and, and Ooh. interesting stuff. He was a very talented songwriter. Um, he was. He who, recently passed away too, didn't he? He did, unfortunately. Um, and another one, which is just, just two chords is somebody that I used to know. Yeah. Which is a, a huge, a huge hit. Yeah. I didn't huge. realize that was, had so few. Yeah. Just chords. doom, doom, doom. Doom, 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 doom. It's just it's just those two chords all the way through. Right. But it helps if you get a second singer. Yes. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and again, the lyrics were quite good in that. It, yeah. Like, yeah. it was a story song that pulled you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's great. And, and again, they make use of, you know, a lot of use of dynamics in terms of vocal delivery and production to kind of give it those different sections. Yeah. Um, Another one of mine uh, that I wanted to uh, play with is uh, Shake It Up by The Cars. Yeah. Um, which is interesting. It's three chords apart from the from the bridge. And but with that, it's I mean, his chorus is just shake it up. Do, 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 shake it up. And, you know, there's like those little guitar licks in between that yeah. kind of that the, were the hockey things. But um, the seasoning. Yeah. <laughs> but um you know, I don't really see that as being like it's a chorus, but it's not as strong a, a chorus as, you mm-hmm. know, "Hold Me Now" or, mm-hmm. um, you know, the other songs. I thought. Yeah, yeah true. Mm-hmm. Neil, what what are your runners up? Uh, so my runner ups was uh, Jason Mraz, "I'm Yours," which is you know a happy bubbly pop song. Um, and again, it, it, like I was saying before, like this is one of the songs that's like a one five minor six four. You know, it's it's basically basically kind of a blues progression. And um, but again, the, the chorus does stand out um, in, in, in that song. Uh, it's, it's certainly distinct. Um, my other uh, pick was Radiohead's Creep. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, again, diff- a, a bit of a unique chord progression, uh, major one, uh, major three, major four, minor four. And it's that minor four that's got them into court for. Yes. Was it the. The Hollies, the Hollies, the air that I breathe, and then, and then they sued Lana Del Rey over that chord progression or that melody. It was, it, it was, it was messy, yeah. right? But you know, it's not I mean, the it's litigation a, chord. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but it is a very distinctive sound to go from that to go from the major to the minor of the same yeah. note. You know, um, uh, so that and, and again, you know, the, the the chorus is distinctive. I mean, they throw tons and tons of you know distorted heavy guitars in the chorus. Um, where the, the the verse is much sparser production wise, so it's an interesting um, story that. about that. Uh, apparently, <laughs> yeah. the, the guitarist didn't like the song, uh, really? and so, yeah, it was a he thought it was a wimpy ballad. So when he got to the chorus, he tried to mess it up with the mm-hmm. heavy kind of staccato, you know, noise part, and they went, "Hey, we like that." And he said, oh, <laughs> damn, <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> apparently, the band the band is not a fan of that song. No, anymore. they don't really? play it live anymore. No. Oh, Which, oh, you know, I have a problem with because if you're an entertainer, mm. just because you don't like a song, but your fans do, it's your job to entertain. That's you're an entertainer. Yeah. If you're going to be an entertainer, you entertain your fans. That's your job. And you have to play every song like it's the first time you've played it and you love it. And that's, you know, if you don't like it, then, you know, work in a bookstore. First well, time I play a song, you know, when you get to that, play a song, it's full of mistakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, they've got enough songs that yeah, I you know, they can't true. play them all. Yeah, uh, they've cool. moved on from that kind of pop yeah. sound, yeah. I think. Um, and my, my last run, yeah. runner-up was uh, Free Fallen by Tom Petty. Of course, what a great song. Yeah. It's a beautiful, uplifting chorus, and it's, yeah, same chords all the way through. I thought the verse and the chorus were different. I, I went back and listened to it, and it's yep. not. It's yep. just, again, a great melody that, you know, transcends the the bed line, uh, bed. Yeah. Verse, and, melody. That one's, that one's very simple too. One four, one five. Oh, yeah. 
One Tom one Petty one. is one of those songwriters that you, you know, if you are want, looking to, to understand songwriting more, he's definitely someone you, it's worthwhile going through his stuff. He's a really kind of almost an underrated songwriter in some ways. I mean, mm-hmm. like he's, he's not that he has, he, he, yeah, but someone who's had that many hits, yeah, he still is kind of but, underrated. Yeah. Yeah. But he's, he's very, he's very crafty and he's got a very good attention to the details. But he never, yeah. But he he never kind of shows up by going, "Ooh, how clever I am!" You know, no, it's it's, it's never is never overstated. But yeah. you, you can see that it's there. You know, if you really yeah. study it, sure. Another another one who's left us not that long ago. So that's true. That's yeah. true. Yes. So you need to listen and value all your songwriters while they last. That's, that's right. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, so that is about all the time we have uh, hey. for Song Talk Radio. Uh, special thanks to all the songs that never change their chord progressions. Yeah, Thank and you please songs. send those in if you have Thank any. Uh, if you're listening and you have a, a great song that fits into that criteria, send it into us. I, 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 I feel like our next. I feel like our next songwriting challenge is is uh, brewing here, guys. Yeah, it's true. I'm thinking yeah, too. Really. Speaking of which, do we have another meetup <laughs> coming? Uh, we yes. do. We will talk about the meetup in a moment. Uh, in the meantime, send us your impressions on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram at Song Talk Radio, or send us an email, feedback at songtalk.ca. And be sure to check out our YouTube channel for live performances, videos, and full episodes, and stop by the website, songtalk.ca. Subscribe today to the Song Talk Radio podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher.com, Spotify, Podcast Addict, and TuneIn.com. Don't forget to sign up for our free newsletter at songtalk.ca. You can find links to all the products, books, and web services we mention on the show on our resources page on the website. And no matter where you are in the world now, you can join us at our next Song Talk meetup. It's on Sunday, May the 24th from 1 to 4 p.m. That's Eastern Time. And it's going to be uh, online. Visit the, the the meetup page and the link to the Zoom meeting is there. Um, our good friend Sherry Jacoby is going to be hosting that meetup. It's free to join on meetup.com and free to attend. And you'll get your own little box and you can share your song with everyone else. And you Stop can by keep song the box. Yeah, the links. You keep the keep, box. Because you guys, and you guys did that last week, right? We did it uh, last month and, and it worked out pretty mm-hmm. well. We had like 12 people, 12 boxes. People came and went as they pleased. Um, so it, it worked out. It worked out quite well. You have to be good about mu- muting yourself when you're not playing. That's yeah, yeah. Whoever's, well, yeah, you have to mute yourself. And everyone just sort of copied and pasted their lyrics into the chat box, and then we worked out pretty well. Okay, great. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's that's actually yeah, cause a lot of people don't even bring their lyrics, so it's really yeah. nice. Exactly. So, um, and also a big thank you to Vanessa Reland for her help behind the scenes at Song Talk Radio. And uh, most of all, we'd like to thank you, our devoted listeners. You can follow me at neilmodi.com. You can follow Phil at the Phil Emery on Twitter. You can follow Michael Proudhood420 on Instagram. And please stop by the website once again, songtalk.ca, to browse past shows and find out how you can be a guest. Stay safe, everyone, and uh, keep on writing, and uh, we'll see you next time. Good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>